everybody. I'm Jonathan Amsterdam. I'm a software engineer on the Go team at Google, and I'm going to talk about structured logging for Go. Specifically, I'll be talking about a new structured logging package we're hoping to add to the standard library. Before I describe the new package, let's see where Go stands today with logging. If you've used Go much, you've probably used the standard library's log package. It's been in Go since the beginning. It supports formatted output with the printf function, as you see here, and it also lets you control where the log lines are output to. It has other features too, which I won't get into here. The log package has served us pretty well over the last decade, especially for command line programs, where the output is mostly read by people. But with servers, log output is often quite voluminous, partly because a server might have multiple instances running at once, but also because logs are often the main way to understand and debug a server, so programmers write a lot of them. Even a relatively small server, like pkg.go.dev, produces almost 4 million log lines per hour. With that many log lines, you pretty much have to use software for filtering and grouping. That requires some sort of machine-readable output, which the log package does not provide. All you can vary is where the output bytes are sent. We'd like more control over the output format. Enter the idea of structured logging. Instead of a line of opaque text, like what log.printf gives you, each log line is a list of key value pairs. A common log element like message is just another key value pair. Output formats for structured logs are designed to be easily machine readable. JSON is a popular choice, but there are others, like the key equals value format I show here. We know structured logging is important to Go programmers because there are many Go packages out there that already provide it. And some of these are quite popular. The first structured logging package for Go, Logris, is used in over 99,000 other packages. Now often we on the Go team are content to let a thousand flowers bloom. That's a sign of a healthy ecosystem. But with logging, there's a problem. Imagine you're writing a large program that uses many packages. Each package might use its own logger. One might go with Logris, another Zap, and so on. Your main program might have to configure each of these logging packages so that the log output is consistent that it all goes to the same place in the same format. Or take something as simple as the label to use for the level. Maybe the service that consumes your logs prefers the label severity, as does Google Cloud's logging API. Your main program has to change all the level keys to severity somewhere. If each logging package has its own way of doing this configuration, we've got a lot of work to do. By putting structured logging in the standard library, we can hopefully get all logging packages to agree on a single way to handle log messages. So now let's look at our proposed design. The new package, named slog, supports structured logging and levels and has a flexible backend to handle log lines. Although we thought about working within the existing log package, we realized that with a new package, we could make a fresh start. Our goals for slog were first, ease of use. We know from experience that most programmers want a logging API that is light on the page. Second, we wanted to make sure logging could be fast enough for high-performance applications. Not every program needs fast logging, most don't in fact, but some do, and we wanted to clear a path for those in the design. Third, since there are already a lot of logging packages out there, we wanted to make sure that Slog could coexist with them. That's why Slog has a two-part design with a front-end and back-end that are somewhat independent of each other. Another logger's front-end could call into Slog's back-end and vice versa. Finally, we wanted Slog to work with the existing log package as much as possible, so the many existing programs that use the standard log package could easily get some of the advantages of structured logging. Let's take a moment to talk about the overall architecture of Slog. At its heart, the package has three types. Loggers implement the user-facing API. Logger is what I've been calling the front end of the package. Each logger has a handler, which is an interface type. Handler is the back end. Because it's an interface, anyone can write their own. A call to info or a related logger method constructs a record and passes it to a handler, which then handles the record however it wants. A handler may output the record, or it may enqueue it for later processing, or it may modify it and pass it to another handler. It could even ignore it. Most users will only use loggers and install existing handlers. They won't write a handler or even see a record. OK, it's time to look at some code. I'm going to put most of our first program up briefly, just to show you the import path. 
golang.org slash x slash exp slash slog. That's temporary, of course, until this package is added to the standard library. But it's a complete implementation that you can use today. Now let's focus on the main function. We start by creating a logger that writes to standard output using a text handler, one of the built-in handlers. We then call the logger's info method, which logs at the info level. Besides info, there are methods called debug, warn, and error, as well as a more general method called simply log that can be used for any level. The first argument to the function is the message, which will automatically get the key msg. The remaining arguments are alternating keys and values. As you can see from the output, a text handler displays the key value pairs using the same format we saw earlier, which both people and computers can read. The output is actually a single line. I just broke it into two to fit on the slide. If I take that slog logger and make it the default, then two nice things happen. First, I can now use top-level functions like slog.info to write logs. I don't have to have a logger at hand. Second, if I use the default logger from the log package, my output goes through the slog handler. You can see that in the last output line. The call to log.printf gets a level of info, and the entire formatted string becomes the message. Now a computer can at least partially parse the output from the log package. We've been using text handler, but it's more common to write logs in JSON. The slog package also has a built-in handler for that. All I have to do is change the default handler and all the output, even from the old log package, is in JSON. I mentioned that one of our goals was speed. Passing alternating keys and values, as we've been doing, gives up some performance for convenience. In Go, as it's currently implemented, that API will usually allocate memory on the heap which takes a bit of time. For most applications, that's going to be fine. But if you need the speed, you can call log adders instead. It takes a list of attributes, or adders as we call them. An adder is a key value pair. Many common values that would allocate memory in the alternating key and value API will not if constructed as part of an adder. As you can see, using adders involves more typing, but high performance applications are willing to make that trade off. How do we know that? The zap logging package has a similar API, and it is widely used. Also, some people prefer using adders because it's clearer which key goes with which value, and you can't accidentally supply one but not the other. So the other logging methods, like info, also accept adders. Whichever API you use, you get the same output. This example demonstrates two more features in a common setting. First, I'll show you all the code, then we'll go into more detail. Here we have a handler for an HTTP server. We want all log lines from a particular request to display that request's URL. In a real server, we would also want to include some unique request ID to facilitate grouping logs by request. So we do that by creating a logger that has some additional attributes. Here we get the default logger with slog.default and call its with method to add the URL, resulting in a new logger. To pass that logger down to functions that process the request, we add it to the context using the new context function. A logger can be retrieved from a context by calling from context. We do that here in the process function. It's common practice to pass the context down through functions that process the request. So the logger is always available to those functions. As you can see, all the lines output from this logger include the URL. As I mentioned, most users will never need to deal with handlers or records, except to create a handler for their logger. But I wanted to show you what it's like to write a handler. The handler interface has a few methods, but I'll just talk about two. The enabled method is an optimization that lets a logger check whether the handler handles records at the given log level. Loggers call enabled early to avoid wasted work. The main method is handle. It's given a record which holds all the information for the log line. Here I've squeezed a simple handle method onto the slide. It just prints the information in a record to a writer that it's been configured with. There's not much to a record. There are the four built-in attributes of time, level, message, and source line, and then the rest, which you access by passing a function to the adders method. We don't expose the slice of adders directly because we're trying to be clever about memory allocation in the service of performance. That's it for the design of the package. So here's how we think and hope the next few months will play out. 
We hope that our proposal will be accepted and will be included in an upcoming Go version. And naturally, it will take over the world. Mwahaha. Actually, existing logging packages are fine. We wouldn't expect people to rewrite their code just to use this new package. But we do hope that pretty quickly, we'll see adapters from the existing packages that support our handler interface. In fact, we've been talking to some of those package authors about that, so it's more of a plan than a hope. That solves the problem I presented at the beginning of this talk, having a large program that includes multiple logging packages, each with its own output format. A program's main function can install one handler that all the packages can use, unifying the program's log output. Then at last, log processing in Go won't be such a slog. Where to go from here? You can read the detailed documentation for the package on pkg.go.dev. The design benefited from a lot of public discussion, which I've linked to. And now we have a proposal making its way through the proposal process. Thank you very much. Thank you.